Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel where we explore the incredible world of 3D modeling. In this video series, we are going to be diving deep into the 1001 bit tool extension for SketchUp. If you are not familiar with the extension, it's a game changer for anyone who wants to take the SketchUp projects to next level. With 39 powerful tools at your disposal, the 1001 bit tool extension let you create complex 3D models with ease. But we are going to split the video into two parts, starting with the first 20 tools in part 1 and in part 2, we'll dive even deeper into the remaining 19 tools in the extension. So without wasting any other time, let's get started. Let's just start with the very first tool, which is drawing a point. You just need to click on the tool and then, then select the edge where you need to start. You can either move into a horizontal distance or you can even have a particular value. Right now we are giving a value of 40 mm and click enter. Then you can move vertically in any direction and then drop the reference point. Basically, this particular tool helps you to drop a reference point. But in SketchUp, we generally use the guidelines tool to have the reference points. So let's just move to the second tool, which is how you can make construction points or reference points, which can be divided to a single line. It's a way different with the divide tool as, divi as divide tool helps you divide a particular line. But right now we need construction points for a particular point in different divisions. So we'll select this line. We'll click on the second tool, which says divides and place construction points. Click on this. You see, you can simply add the number of segments you need to divide in. Right now, we'll click on eight and click divide edges. So it will automatically create eight reference point. Remember, this hasn't divided the line. It has just created the construction point as per the line and the given divisions. You can also use this particular tool with the curved lines. You just simply need to go to divide and place, change the number of segments you need. We'll go with 10 and then divide edge. So it will automatically have the reference point as by your given decisions. Again, this has not, this hasn't divided the line. This has just given you a reference point, which is in a particular group. Now moving further, we have the third tool, which helps you align different objects placed in different axes. Now we need this particular object to be placed right below this. How we can do this? We just simply need to select the object and then go to our third tool, which is align selected entities. Click on this. It will ask you to pick a reference point on the selected entity. So we'll select the point one. Then it will ask you to select point two and then it will ask you to select the face. So we need this particular face or we need this particular face. So right now we have your, we need this particular face. So I'll click on this. Then it will ask you to pick the new position. See new position for reference points. So we'll click on this, repeat the process as we did earlier, click on this. And then I need the object here. So I'll click on this. So it will come below over this. So this is how you can align objects from different axes. Let's just move further with our fourth tool, which helps you make lines which are perpendicular to any point. For example, we just select this face. We can click on the fourth tool, which says draws an edge line perpendicular to an edge. So we'll click on this. We'll click on this and it will it will automatically snaps to a perpendicular distance, not to a diagonal distance, right? See, in a diagonal, it's just giving me a dotted line, but at a very perpendicular distance, it is giving me a straight line. Now the fourth tool helps you make faces at different axes. Now, this particular lines are not in a straight or you can say in a blue axis. These are globe planar axes. So this particular icon, if you can see this very carefully, it, it says that it can draw face at any different level. So I'll click on this. But the very first thing is you need to select a face. It doesn't matter if it's a circle or if it's a triangle, it will always make a rectangular face selection. So once you have selected the face, now it will ask you to select the point and then draw the lines again and double click at the end. And there you have a surface at a coplanar level. With, the, with our next tool, we can easily make surfaces just like the pen tool, but it's way different with the pen tool. You can simply select this line, give a particular line 
right now we'll just join the edge and double click at the very end it will make a surface now you will say how it's different with the pen tool so how it's different with the pen tool is you need to select the tool you need to click on this thing click on another way and if i click if i double click on the surface it will automatically create this line basically it will automatically close the surface repeating it again if we give a very different shape and if i just double click it will automatically align my last point to my start point so this is how it can make surface without joining the end lines now in the very next tool we have we have this profile and the curve now you will say this can be done using the follow me tool which is pre-installed in sketchup so let's just use that particular tool we just select the edge we'll go to follow me and then select the surface we would need to use now see carefully when you have clicked on the surface it dragged according to the line but it also twisted the profile along the curve if in the situation you don't need the twisted profile you just need this profile to straightly follow the path as per your line then this tool can help you a lot for this you just need to select the line click on extrude selected profile you can just click on this now you just need to pick the profile extruded face after then pick a reference point from the profile face right wise here and then give a starting point which i'll go and select this particular curve as you can see this has followed the path now i'll just do one thing i'll just move this thing near to that so that you can get a better idea now you can see it has followed the path along the curve but in this follow me function it has twisted the path moving to our next example now there are a lot of situations when you need to push pull the extruded surfaces or you can say the beveled surfaces so uh, likewise i need to extrude this particular surface now if i use the push pull tool it will only allow me to push it over here but i need this particular direction to be followed this particular direction to be followed for that i'll use the next tool which is extrude selected profiles i'll click on this sorry before that you just need to select the surface and then click on extrude selected profiles now this helps you to extrude the particular profile once you're done with this extrusion part you can double click and there you go now for the better understanding we'll just understand this basically if i need this taper to move upward direction and with a decreasing area i cannot get there with the push pull tool but same ways if i select the surface and if i click on this extruded selected profile this will help me to extrude it with the way it is built so that's how you can achieve this with this extrude selected profile now the next tool helps you to move the vertices of the entities for example if i need to make any change in this particular shape i cannot do that with the move tool or any dent kind of thing can be cannot be done in this but once if i triple click on this i'll get this entities line now what this tool helps you once you click on this move selected vertices it can help you to move the selected joints and you can always change the shape as for your design or whatever you need for suppose we can keep alternative things in the inner side and we can make a new shape so this is how this particular tool works moving further we have two tools which are related to each other which is fillet two edges and chamfer two edges so what's the difference between the two let's just found it so click on this fillet two edges and then select the edge one and the sill edge two it will ask you to enter a particular radius right now we are going to have a radius of let's say 1200 mm and click ok so it will make a curve according to the given radius now what's the difference between the two is select the chamfer two edges and select the one edge and select the two edge and this you can have two different values so in this let's just add a value of 1500 with the second chamfer edge distance value to be given as 2200 mm click on ok and there you go you can see how it it has easily created that chamfer edge the very next tool helps you in a kind of autocad way 
like suppose you have this incomplete line if you need to extend this particular line to this perpendicular line just like we used to do in AutoCAD extension tool we have it over here extend edges so I'll select the line click on the extend line and you can select or pick the target edge I'll click on this it will complete my line simply select the line click on edge complete and click on this now with relation to this we have another tool which is creating parallel offsetting lines now offset tool in SketchUp only allows you to offset surfaces it doesn't allows you to offset a particular line so this tool helps you do that I'll select a line and simply go to offset so basically you need to add a value for the off offset distance right now I'm adding 1500 and clicking on OK you can select the direction and there you go again select this go to offset value let's just hit to 2500 offset value and OK select the direction and single click and the empty space let's just move further with another tool which is horizontally sliced through connected faces now how this tool helps you is this tool helps you to create horizontal slices now what that means is you can select the whole object and click on this horizontal slice you can simply have a random line or you can you know just need to have a specific value right now if i give 3000 and enter it will give me an offset of three size 3000 basically it has split my surface at 3000 if you don't need that if you need just to singly slice the thing you can come here you can add the value either add a value or either go randomly now the other tool which is creating slopes now how they can uh, now how it helps you basically we have if we have a curve now select the line and click on automatically slopes now it will ask you a height right now let's just take a height of you can say 4000 and let's keep everything the same and click slope selected edges you need to select a start point and you need to select the point where you need to enter the z level so as you can see it has raised a little as we are not working in scale so let's just do it again let's just click uh, select the edge click on this particular tool and just give it a value of let's just say 10,000 and click on slope selected edges now select simply select the starting point at the end point now it, as you can see it has created a decent slope this can be done using several tools but you cannot create a slope using a single edge you can repeat the same process with a different value at you can say 15,000 and just click on slope selected edges select your what select your starting point and the end point and there you go now there are some of the times when you used to have copies of different objects which is directly related to array objects now it has a tool which says create array of groups and components simply click on this you have the number of entities i'll go with number of basically it is asking how many copies you need so i'll just select on click on six and build array and now it's asking me to pick a reference point i'll click on this and pick a starting point i'll simply click on the same point and then give it a direction i'll just have the direction over here and it will automatically array the object now this can be achieved using the move tool what cannot be done using the move tool is which is explained with the next tool is simply select the object and click on this create two dimensional array now this helps you to make two dimensional in uh, in column distance and row distance so i'll have the value of let's just say 6000 and again 6000 you can change the number of columns say we need a number of columns at 12 and the number of rows at four five let's say and say built array again select a reference point select a starting point give direction a and then give a direction b within a single tool and just a bit of settings you can have multiple arrays not just this you can even array the objects in a circular way now i'll just select the object and click on the and there another tool which is create array of groups and components in circular direction simply select this and here you can add the number of entities and the polar array angle you need 
right now we just need to copy it at you know say just 12 times and then click on built array so basically it has created a circular array why it has created a circular array let's just go back select the object again and click on the tool again as we haven't added any vertical distance over here so let's just have a vertical distance which can be just say 12,000 at we are not working on a particular scale so click on built array and select line and just you just need to select a line so as you can see it can be used at making circular staircase let's just move to the last tool of the day there are situations when people spend most of the times building walls in their models now that can be reduced with this next tool which is build vertical wall simply click click simply click on this icon and you will get this dialog box it will ask you the wall thickness which right now we can take as 230 mm which is 9 inches wall with the wall height of 3000 mm which will work perfectly fine now it will ask you the wall alignment it can be right center left now what's the difference between each and everything once you click on left it will basically align the wall with the left direction of your reference point if you select the center it will go to the center line and if you select the right it will go to the right point now i'll just simply select the right and just click on built wall just zoom in a bit simply click on one surface you can change the direction of wall by single click change the direction again and where you need to end the wall simply double click at the end and there you have a wall within seconds now the next tool is also linked with this particular wall tool which is creating openings in vertical walls you can simply click on this and you get this dialog box in which you can decide the opening width and the opening height let's just take the opening width as 1500 and the opening height as 2100 or you can just say 1600 here and let's just reduce it to 900 here and click on create opening as you can see it is asking me to pick a reference i'll have pick a reference over here and here i can have a horizontal distance and then move the wall in a vertical distance you can even add the value uh, let's just give it value of 600 and enter so it will create an opening accordingly you can also customize the opening you can simply create a custom shape let's just create a rec this rectangle we can just simply click on this tool let's just click on setup profile S just need to select the surface and it will automatically pick that surface and will make it an opening again select a reference go to a horizontal distance and a vertical distance and there you go you can easily have wall and the openings within a minute and if you have any questions about the process please leave them in the comment below and we will do our best to answer them that's all for today please let us know if you enjoyed the video leave a comment if you learned something new and subscribe if you are new to the channel